I'm going to start with a reminder from Patrick Henry, back when give me liberty or give me death actually meant something. Guard with jealous attention the public liberty. Suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. Unfortunately, nothing will preserve it but downright force. Vaccine pushing, misinformation peddling, newspeak promoting mainstream media is dead set on dumbing you down and swindling your mind into accepting your new normal. First, the mayor of Chicago, Queen Lightfoot, passes down her psychopathic edicts for anybody who dares to walk as a free individual in her neck of the woods. Now, I've directed Superintendent Brown to order all police districts to give special attention to these parties. And this is how it's going to be. We will shut you down. We will cite you. And if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail, period. There should be nothing unambiguous about that. Don't make us treat you like a criminal. But if you act like a criminal and you violate the law and you refuse to do what is necessary to save lives in the city in the middle of a pandemic, we will take you to jail, period. Now, one of the things I appreciate about Lightfoot is that she wears her tyranny on her sleeve for all to see. There's no deceptive words here. As a matter of fact, I wish all political parasites were this direct about their intentions to enact evil on the land. I love her, don't make us treat you like a criminal bit. If a person exercises his or her freedom and some light foot crony comes along and violates that individual in any way, the person doing the violating is the criminal. What I like about Lightfoot is that she articulates what's in the heart of every criminal politician. If you don't obey them and allow them to suspend your rights, Team Lightfoot will crush you under their filthy boots of tyranny. At least it's all out in the open and you don't have to guess about it. And all you law enforcers in Chicago, if you go along with this, if you turn your minds off and follow suit with all the other badge-wearing order followers, you're even worse than Queen Lightfoot because you're the ones who are actually committing the crime of arresting, kidnapping, caging, and destroying the lives of people who just want to operate their businesses or have a party with friends. Moving right along to the new speak of the MSLSD prostitutes over at the Morning Ho. Listen to this and see if you can pick out the desensitizing nature of their script as they seek to acclimate viewers to their new normal. The mitigation steps that we took were an attempt to try to prevent the, the healthcare system from becoming overwhelmed, and they worked to do that. The hospitals never really became overrun, but they were a bridge. They weren't a solution. They're not going to end transmission of this virus, but we did think that we'd be at lower levels at this point when we started to contemplate reopening aspects of the economy. So they take credit for mitigating the infection rate of a so-called disease that has still not been isolated, purified, or visualized according to Koch's postulate. And then they put themselves in the driver's seat as being the ones whose job it is to contemplate reopening aspects of the economy as though they were our overlords and we wait for them to give us the green light before we can proceed with our lives. And then there's expert Michael Osterholm. The only thing that's going to stop this is either a vaccine that is able to then bring us immunity or the fact that it marches through the population until it gets to 60 or 70 percent. And only then, when that many people are infected, does it start to slow down. There's nothing else that's going to change this. Again, the this they keep on talking about still hasn't been proven to have killed anybody. And how could you prove anyone has it when the test kits highly inaccurate all by themselves, can only test for RNA sequences and not a so-called virus that hasn't even been identified, purified, or visualized. Nevertheless, the vaccine, according to Osterholm, is the thing that's going to save us from a disease whose claim to fame is, well, not killing that many people. So now we've got Trust us to open the economy and trust us to give you the drug that's going to save you from a not so deadly thing that's not really killing a lot of people that we can't even prove has even killed anybody. But wait, there's more. 
Now, we can alter potentially how to get to 60 or 70 percent with our distancing mm-hmm. and what we do in the everyday war, uh, life. But even that's not going to stop this transmission. So when you ask me, when can businesses open safely? Well, there is no safety right now. There's just a relative la- uh, degree of what's happening. And I think just take my word for it. There's no safety out there right now. So we can't open up. And you need to continue obeying us by social distancing and wearing the masks so that we can flatten the curve. And if you don't do it, well, you're just a corrupt, immoral person who doesn't care about the lives of old people. I think what we're going to be into is a situation of constantly monitoring week by week to know when do we hit the accelerator to try to slow things down by uh, locking down more. And when do we let it up and say, OK, go back at it. Uh, but right now, there is not going to be one day that we're going to be able to turn the switch on and say it's OK. We need to constantly monitor you as we gather the data which we will interpret based on our faulty calculations, fraudulent numbers, and reliably unreliable tests. And from there, we're either going to lock you down again or allow you to go back to work. Because even though we flip the switch off, we can't just flip it back on. Translation, we the experts control the switch to society and you'll do exactly as we say, if you want to live. I was talking a couple of days ago to Dr. Paul Offit, a guy who develops vaccines for a living, who developed the rotavirus vaccine. And he says by opening up even a little bit, we're kind of embarking on a grand national experiment as if to say we're going to push people back in in small doses a little bit and cross our fingers, basically. So what have you make of this sort of phased reopening of the economy and this, it seems, new optimism that people can go outside and go about their lives? Guys, that's the mindset of a psychopathic control freak. These people really think that a small group of people have a right to control the lives of others, in the name of keeping them safe, of course. The question isn't, do we want to go back? The question is, is it even remotely safe to do so? And you know what would have helped a lot in terms of getting us ready to go back is if we had a great testing and tracing and isolation program. Testing, tracing, and isolation program. It just absolutely will not be safe until our Gestapo army of contact tracers and isolators track you down, come to your house, and force you into a government-imposed isolation process. Let's call contact tracing what it really is. Constitution trampling. All in the name of keeping you safe. They're the experts from the government, and they're just here to help themselves to your freedom. If we can make make testing a massive priority, it'll make it safer for us to go back and engage in in economic activity and kind of start getting our lives back. Translation, you ain't going back to work or getting your lives back until we dump a whole bunch of tax cattle funny money onto the biotech and pharmaceutical companies. Guys, just follow the money. This is a grand experiment. And unfortunately, the cost of getting the experiment wrong is that people are going to lose lives and we're going to have to you know, shut our economy down again. This is brain softening totalitarian mind control. Nobody gets to shut the economy down ever for any reason. As we're seeing, shutting down the economy is going to cost far more lives than any disease or natural disaster ever could. Yeah, Dr. Osterholm, as you game this out a little bit, as we do, let's the governors let people go out and to get some takeout or go get a haircut or do the things that they've done, go to beaches and go to parks. Did you guys catch what he just said? Here, let me play it again. Yeah, Dr. Osterholm, as you game this out a little bit, as we do, let's the governors let people go out and to get some takeout or go get a haircut or do the things that they've done, go to beaches and go to parks. As governors let people go out to get some takeout or get a haircut or go to beaches and parks, this is them acclimating you to your new world, to the new America, where you need to get the permission of power tripping politicians before you're allowed to do things that free people can just go out and do because they want to do it, not because they've been granted permission from on high from some ruler. Guys, this is literal insanity. Nature itself make make this quiet. Of course, nature always takes care of it. No shutdown has ever been necessary before, and it's not necessary now. Now listen to this nonsense. But I'm promising you that we are going to see a major, major tsunami of activity somewhere down the road. Oh, there's going to be a tsunami, all right. 
but it's going to be a tsunami of life-destroying hyperinflation, homelessness, a massive increase in criminal activity from desperate people who are at the end of their rope because they've lost everything in this shutdown, and a one-world currency that will put the final nail on the coffin of our freedoms. And so what we're really doing is we're trying to get ourselves from stage to stage to stage. And I, and I worry that we somehow think if we just get over this hump, we're there. And again, I, I got to remind people, we have maybe infected 5 to 15 percent of the people. We now have a disease that is the number one cause of death in this country with just that number. You mean just that number? That Big Daddy Pharma Hopkins number they keep flashing on our screens every 24-7 news cycle? That's about as big a lie as you could possibly tell. They've already informed us that they'd throw the kitchen sink, the living room couch, and your dirty laundry into that Johns Hopkins number if they thought they could get away with it. This is dishonesty at its finest. Now, corporate teleprompter reader turned pharmaceutical rep Mika B turns on the sales pitch heat by promoting mass testing and Gates' final solution vaccine. If testing is one of the key ways to get safely back, testing or a vaccine, um, Dr. Zha, how long is it going? I mean, other countries have this. They've figured it out. How long will it take for the United States to have testing in place? Or will we ever get it? See, your overlords want you to know that you ain't going back to normal until you bow down to big pharma, the biotechs, and your corporately controlled governmental rulers. That is the incessant message of fake stream media.